Well, there's World Series fever in the air with the 2022 New York Mets, and that makes us look back to the Mets' first World Series in 1969. And this guy played 12 seasons with the Mets, essentially his whole career outside of, you know, a cup of coffee with the White Sox, but 12 seasons, 63 to 75. He was a crucial member of the 1969 World Series champion Mets. He was a 1969 All-Star Mets Hall of Famer, the Mets all-time left fielder, he was called. And now he has a new book. You can go get it now. I like to say wherever books are sold. Coming home, my amazing life with the New York Mets. Let's welcome to Amazing But True, Cleon Jones. Cleon, welcome to the show. Jake Brown, Nelson Figueroa here. Good morning. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, good to be here. When you get 80 years of age, it's good to be anywhere. Well, you don't look a day over 60, Cleon. You're, you, you yeah. cut 20 years off your life. You're still looking good. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. The check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, the check is not in the mail for the Braves, and you know the beating the Braves pretty well. I mean, what a weekend for the Mets. How about this four out of five, six and a half game lead? The team is feeling high, and that's why, you know, memories of 69 and 86 come up because this team could be doing something special. Absolutely. I, I, I watched part of the game yesterday. Uh, uh, I do get all the, the Braves games, so when they're playing the Mets, I'm right in front of the TV watching the game. Uh, and what I saw uh, on yesterday, th this team is kind of similar to the 69 team. Uh, good pitching. Uh, uh, they platoon pretty much like we did. Uh, 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 Shorewater is doing a great job in, in managing and doing all the small things. Uh, uh, I saw a squeeze. Uh, <laughs> that, that was unusual for today's game. Uh, but they're doing all the right things. They're playing small ball, and uh, they, they're playing to make contact. So that, that that's, that's good news, and that's good baseball. Absolutely, and I think you could – definitely attest to how important it is to have a veteran manager leading the way and what a difference Buck Showalter has made this year compared to the last two managers. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to compare anybody to Gil Hodges, but uh, I see some similarities uh, with uh, Buck. And, and uh, certainly uh, uh, when I watch him make his moves, uh, uh, he seemed to be at least one one inning ahead of the game. I always say Gail Hodges was three or four innings hmm. ahead of what was happening. So he was great with pitching and great with uh, with position players, and he, he was great with uh, fence players. Just saying, you know, be ready when your number is called, and that seems to be the thing that's happening uh, with these Mets. Uh, I say these Mets, our Mets, <laughs> our Mets, and. Uh, it's, it's fun to watch now. Yeah, you two could say that a little more than I can because you actually did put on the uniform. I just put it on as a fan as I got the 69 World Champs jersey behind me. Uh, you know, not an authentic, though, one of the giveaways. You guys wore the authentic, the real stuff, and you got that in your closet. We're talking with 1969 World Series champion Cleon Jones here on Amazing But True. Isn't that so important to have this kind of manager that can do this? I mean, Buck Showalter Sunday, Cleon basically outsmarted the umpires. He knew about the, you know, that the ball didn't tag the runner. And then he probably should have been at second base. He was fighting. He's had times where the umpires didn't know the rule and he did. And you're seeing such a difference from past Mets teams of Mickey Calloway, Luis Rojas, that this, his brains are really leading this team and doing things that you don't see from any other managers. You're not going to get outsmarted when you play the New York Mets. Well, that, that, that's, uh, that's sports. See, uh, winning comes from the top down, not from the bottom up. Uh, when you got good manager, uh, good general manager, good front office, uh, it trickles down to the team. And certainly uh, uh, that's what seemed to be happening. Uh, th these guys uh, 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 right now are playing great baseball, uh, making contact uh, and, and moving runners. Suddenly, uh, uh, everybody can be a little bit better. Uh, that's what we say when we sit on the outside. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you have a manager that's in control of the game and in control of the players, uh, that's, a, that's a big difference that you need. Absolutely. And so in, in 1968, 
nothing to laugh at. You batted 297. The next year, you have the career year and just the right time with the 69 Mets. You batted 340. 340, such a huge jump. What was the big difference for you in 69 rather than 60? I mean, 297, like I said, still a great year. Well, well in baseball, confidence uh, is everything. Uh, in 68, well, I, I got to know more about myself. And I, I preached to myself all winter that if I got off to a better start, that uh, I, I could hit 300. Uh, I wasn't thinking about 340 or 360 or anything like that. I, I just wanted to be a 300 hitter. And confidence, uh, knowing what you want to do at the plate. See, the hardest thing in baseball for, for a player, the, the, the toughest person to defeat is yourself. When you're able to defeat you uh, and have yourself under control, that, that's, that's more than half the battle. Because we, we give the other guys too much credit. Uh, the pitcher throws the ball, but once he releases, uh, you should be in control. And if, if you're not, that's on you. So uh, in 69, I, I was just simply in control. Uh, and, and my attitude about nobody could get the ball by me uh, was spot on. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't ever read the paper to see who was pitching. I just wanted to get to the ballpark and get some of the bats. <laughs> Leon, yeah, and I think yeah. knowing yourself, like you just said, uh, the biggest thing I see in difference is uh, only 60 strikeouts in a season. Mm -hmm. That is unheard of in today's day and age, but only 60 strikeouts. You cut down from, I mean, it was still below 100 of 98 strikeouts, but such a big difference, like you said, your preparation and your mindset was no one could get the ball by you, and you're going to do everything you could to probably put the ball in play with hard contact and had great results. Well, yeah, certainly uh, uh, that, that wasn't on my mind about strikeouts. Uh, and, and, and probably a great percentage of those were uh, balls that I took, sometimes purposely, to set up the next, next at bat. But mm. uh, my, my thing was that uh, if I uh, could handle myself, if I knew what I wanted to do each and every time I went to the plate and know what I wanted to hit and what area of the plate that I was going to work off of, then that, that was half the battle for me. Uh, that made it tough for the pitcher because he had to he had to figure out what I was doing. I didn't have to figure out what he was doing. And that's what propelled me to hit. Uh, and I, I, I would have Probably won a batting championship that year had I not cracked cracked three ribs uh, uh, during the midseason because I was I was just in control. I was moving up. I wouldn't mm -hmm. I wouldn't stand at three forty. I, I was I was at three sixty when I cracked cracked my rib, and and uh, it, it was it was so much fun. I couldn't wait till to get the ballpark. Sometimes I hated to leave because I didn't want the game to be over. <laughs> how often do you get stopped or asked about you know the 69 team like you live in alabama so you know it's less than if you were on the streets of astoria here in queens but how often do you get stopped asked about it think about it is that something that's on your mind a hundred times a day well uh you, you get asked about it i, I live in alabama but it, it, it's as real here in alabama as it is in new york Everybody knows about that. I'm known for uh, the last out, mm -hmm. the last out. I I'm known for being part of the 1969 World Champion Mets. So everywhere I go, uh, that association pop up. But that that's that's the good news. This uh, team has lived uh, what uh, 52, 53 years. Uh, how, how many? How many teams you know of that won World Series that you can you can name right off the bat, and everybody can talk about it and talk about all the things that happened each and every inning, whether it be the fifth inning, uh, the last out. Uh, six and nine was a, a a year that to me uh, brought this country together in, in many ways. Uh, underdogs winning, uh, people understanding. Uh, other people, whether it be black people understanding white and, and, and that difference, 
young and old uh, pulling for the same team. Uh, young kids running around the ballpark, white kids saying, I'm Tommy A.G., uh, black kids being Tom Seaver. Uh, that kind of thing happened in 69, and uh, it kind of brought the country together. So uh, we, we, we're all proud of that, that we were able to rally the country uh, to at least think about we're all one and the same. And a man was on the moon that year as well. So a lot of things were going down in 1969. Listen, the Jets won. They never won again. So that's something that's rare. Uh, the Knicks won a title that season. So mm -hmm. it was a big time for you. Like, were you guys out? You know, there'll be like WFN callers, you know, this guy meets this guy. They have dinner together. But the real thing I'm curious about is, did you guys like party with the Knicks teams and the Jets teams? Like you all won in the same year or the year after. Were you guys, I, I guess Studio 54 wasn't a thing then. I don't know what was the thing in 1969, but <laughs> did you guys go all, all go out and party together? Like you, Willis Reed, Clyde Frazier? Yeah. Well, well, uh, uh, Studio uh, 54 or 59, whatever it was, that, uh, <laughs> a few years ago, uh, it was Outfield of Lounge at that time. What is it called? Mm. Outfielder's Lounge? Yeah. Tommy Ag and I, uh, with another partner, had had a, a nightclub restaurant Ooh. right there in uh, in Queens, and uh, Clyde and uh, other guys uh, came by quite often. Uh, the Jets uh, quite familiar with with uh, Joe's place. We hung out at Joe's place with Joe, and uh, we all were with Joe better. and some other females, maybe, and other people in the building. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe had all the females. Yeah, and. and uh, we just uh, uh, followed behind Joe and, and uh, uh, got in on the excitement. Uh, but, but it was great, <laughs> you know, being in, in his presence because uh, he, he's a wonderful guy and he's a good friend. Suddenly, uh, uh, we all uh, had the same dream of winning uh, in New York, and we were all fortunate enough to do that. So the Jets passed the winning fever on to the Mets who passed it on to the Knicks. That's essentially what happened. And that's something that you were discussing at, uh, at Joe's and at uh, well, outfielders or, and all you guys talked about. Yeah. Well, we, we, we talked about other things because uh, 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 Joe uh, at that time, uh, everybody that came to visit Tommy, AJ and I from, from Alabama wanted to go see Joe name. <laughs> And so we, we, we had to, after a ball game, we would go down and sit and talk uh, with Joe, have a skillet steak or whatever, and, and uh, just reminisce about uh, Alabama, uh, uh, the Jets, the Mets, and, and uh, other things that had to do with New York. So it, it, it was a kind of a kinship that you may or may not understand because you wouldn't think that uh, Willis Reed and and Clyde and, and all of us uh, would be seeing each other and we would be all, all be great friends. That's exactly what happened. New York is a big place, uh, but it was a very small and tiny place with these three teams. Yeah, for uh, professional uh, athletes in New York, yeah, uh, professional athletes in New York, that's immediate like coverage, immediate response. You, you, you're brought into that limelight um no matter who you are and i think what it was very special about those teams is that you guys all did it at the same time so right. you could you know you knew exactly what each other was going through and and it was the then the sense of accomplishment as you did it it was okay now we'll go support the knicks we'll go watch them play and root Definitely. them on and that's such a great thing to do to have that camaraderie in a city like new york where it's so many people you can get lost in the shuffle but when you're able to have somebody in your corner like a Joe Namath, and it, mm -hmm. to name those names, even right. as you know, teammates who aren't are actually on your team, but they're on your team because you're a New right. Yorker. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we all on the same team. We're just playing a, a different sports. Yes, sir. Right. Your that was great. Cleon, your book "Coming Home: My Amazing Life" with the New York Mets. You can get us get it now. Tell us a little nugget from the book that uh, someone might find and why they should get it. Well, all all of these things that we're talking about now are uh, in the book. Uh, we, we talk a great deal about Gil Hodges and what he meant uh, to our winning. Uh, we talk about the great pitching that we had, Tom Seaman, Kuzman, Ryan, and all those guys. Uh, it, it's a great read, if, if I have to say so myself. And we talk about uh, my hometown and, and what we're doing in, uh, in this area uh, to help the citizenry. 
uh, by you know building homes and refurbishing homes and and and, and just helping people in general. Uh, and that's our, our real mandate uh, is to give back because there was so much given to uh, to I say us, my family, uh, coming up in this neighborhood. So we're just for the last thirty years, uh, we've just been trying to give back uh, and help someone that, that that need help, or help everyone that we possibly can that need help, and that's why we we form uh, our nonprofit, the Last Out Foundation, uh, and that that's that's part of the reason why we, we're doing this book, so people can know what we're doing and what we are what we're all about, and just get to know the real Cleon Jones and family. Well, 80 years old, still give it back. Happy belated birthday, by the way. I see your birthday was the other day. So the yeah, big well, 8 how'd you celebrate? Well, that, that, that wasn't my real birthday. My real birthday, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my brother's actually birthday, uh, uh -oh. August 4th. And I don't know how we got that screwed up, but we did. <laughs> and and uh, my birthday is June the 24th. Oh, well, happy belated uh, birthday. We, we, <laughs> Very belated. Well, well, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I turned 80 and uh, uh, I know what it's like now to be 80. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still oh, looking good. good and still, you know, telling great stories and stuff. And I got to say, it comes full circle for me, Cleon. I've met 20 of the 69 Mets. I used to go to the sports card and memorabilia shows in Westchester and throughout New York. And I got 20 of you guys to sign a big poster. It's like right after I think you catch. Uh, the last out and, you know, the fans start storming the field, which you would never have today. And I want to hear about that actually, but yeah, it met 20, you guys got it signed. Me and my dad would go to the shows and, you know, I started to learn about the history of the Mets and it obviously started with you guys. So it's pretty cool to get to talk to you now after, you know, you signed my poster when I was like 14 years old and I had hair and teeth were more crooked and uh, you know, wasn't, wasn't talking to ladies then it was a different world back uh, when I was 14, but this all comes full circle Cleon, so we appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you guys for having me. Go out and buy, buy the book and have some real fun reading it because it, it was a delight for me to do the book. And certainly I, I think it's going to be a great read for everybody that goes out and get it. So thank you for having me and uh, be blessed, guys. Listen, I, I, I have one thing to say. With Seaver getting his statue finally with the New York Mets in the franchise, I think iconic moments for the New York Mets should be placed in some kind of bronze. And so I think you catching that last out will be somewhere around City Field shortly. And I think it's well-deserved. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and, and certainly uh, we, we like to cap all of those great moments. Uh, certainly Seaver uh, was the catalyst uh, of that team. And, and uh, if not for Siva or Gil Hodges or even Tommy Ag, we wouldn't be talking about the 69 Mets. But uh, it's history, and uh, let's enjoy it. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on Amazing But True, Cleon. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.